Hello everyone. Today I'm going to interview Tom Barr. Tom is a light sail videos owner and he's the videographer actually too. Um, Tom and I have known each other probably for, what would you say, maybe five years ish? Yeah, probably somewhere around there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he agreed to, um, to share some of his video um, production experience with us. And uh, um, since we're all business owners, entrepreneurs here, um, I'm gonna ask him questions that relates to, to small businesses, to uh, maybe beginner videography or more advanced, you know, kind of videography. So um, let's start, okay? So tell us a little bit about yourself, Tom. What do you enjoy about making videos and what made you decide to pursue this field yeah so i'm uh what i tell everybody is that i'm that classic story of just you know i thought i picked up a camera when i was 12 years old and that's you know been my path since and it is actually true i mean i actually remember um oddly enough the very specific shot where i was like this thing is super cool and i'm going to follow up on this and so it's been you know since that time uh through my teenage years i mean going right into college was an easy pick for what i was going to study and uh, immediately when I got out, I knew uh, the career path I was going on. So um, I've been doing video. Um, my first paying gig was uh, when I was a senior in high school. So I, I'm over a decade into doing video, um, you know, as a paid person. Um, I, to me, video, the, the most amazing thing is being able to tell a story from your own perspective. And I know there's a lot of video producers out there who would, uh, you know, they always talk about, oh, the art of storytelling. You'll see that anybody, any videographer at some point on their web page is going to have the art of storytelling, which is true. It is. But um, to me, it's, I mean, on a more personal side of it, I love showing my perspective and how I see the world. So that's kind of how I got into that. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, I worked for full time for a company for a few years, uh, producing all their uh, corporate messages and, and editorial type content. And then um, yeah, in 2015, uh, I, I wish I could say that I started my business on my own accord, but of course I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I was laid off, but I knew it was Kevin, so I said, okay, I know you guys still want to do contracting, uh, you still want video work, so we started then. And it gave me a chance to start my business, which is something that uh, I grew up in an entrepreneurial house. So uh, running a business and understanding the business mindset is in my blood, so to be able to merge I love a video with my background of understanding business has been a ton of fun. I, um, I think having, you know, entrepreneurs in your family, because, because I do too, my mom is an entrepreneur. She's 75 and she still enjoys working because she owns her own company, right? Uh, I think it's huge help. I don't, I don't know what you think about it, but for me, you know, seeing her conduct herself, you know, in her daily life and, and her work ethic and all that, that kind of stuff, I think that's helpful when you start your own business. Um, what can videos do for your business and, and what can a professional video do? And before um, I give you the word, I actually, this is what you and I have in common, right? We, we both do videos for businesses just at a very different level. My, my videos are geared towards, you know, social media. So in a way, one of my goals is not to have to edit the videos very much. That's, that's actually one of my main goals when we create videos. So they can be, you know, as close to real time as possible. For you, it's very different, right? Your videos are, I imagine, way more edited and, and you know, with the professional equipment and all that, you probably spend a lot of time on each of your videos. So what can videos do for a business and at the level you create them, right? Sure. Um, I mean, maybe I, I could quickly address i mean just that general question of what can videos do for business which is you know the same that you know i mean it's it just increases exposure you know social media google it, it likes video so it's going to help your your seo it's going to help you be found plus it's easier to get that message out there um people want to see who they're doing business with who who they're going to come in and get service from um and it's just it you get you can convey so much more information than in a picture or just text because you're getting the demeanor of, I mean, when I do my own marketing videos, I've had people say, um, when I meet them for the first time, that they've already met me because they know my personality. So there's tons of benefits from just doing video in general. Um, on that professional level, I mean, really, you're just talking about um, maybe just a more coordinated way of of telling your business story and making sure that your message is more efficient so uh, a lot of times a, a client will come to me and say 
well, we want to have a video that promotes this product. And that's about as far as they know how to go. But what I can help with is, okay, how do we tell that story? And you start by asking the questions and anybody who does their own videos or, or works with somebody can do this on their own, but you just have to have that mind to go, uh, well, what's my, what's my target market? What's the action I want them to take? Um, you basically have to study, you know, just sit down and really think through what is my message? Um, the who, what, when, where, and why, because then you really get that through. So, so with the professional type video, um, you know, I've done this time and again, and I understand I, if you say this is the uh, we're aiming towards, you know, middle-aged women for this product, um, I can say, okay, well, we definitely want uh, maybe a male versus a female uh, giving that message. So there's a lot of different options. And then on the production quality side, I mean, really a video is a reflection of your own business. So if you have a very high, very nice looking video, um, people are going to have more respect. They're going to say, okay, this is a very serious thing. And, and it, it is in fact true uh, statistically that if you make a bad video, um, it will hurt your business. So there is definitely that. I'd say maybe maybe the short answer is just that the higher production quality, the more serious and more respect you're going to get from a potential client or customer. Mm -hmm. uh, so two things. Um, I noticed two things in your answer. One of them was you said an, a nice, a very nice looking video, right? Um, can we dig into that? And then, then the other thing that stood out for me was um, that when, when a client approaches you um, that they want to create a product video to promote a product, sounds like you, are you saying that you, you don't want to agree right away that let's just do a product video? Is, is that not your favorite? Would you rather like create something higher level that more introduces the business and the person maybe along with the, the product? So these are the two things that I, I kind of was going to ask you next. Yeah, no problem. Um, no, I think... If it came off that way, I, I, that I, you know, I'm wrong to come off that way. Cause, cause to me, video is what you need it to be at that time. So if a company came to me and said, I don't have any videos, where do I start? Um, I always say, start with your explainer video. So if you have one product, sure, it's going to be a product video, but if you're a, a company that sells multiple different ones, you want to touch on all of them. Um, however, if you say, we really want to get this specific product out. This is how our business is going to succeed right now. Then that's the right course of action. You do want to have that product video for sure. Um, forgive me. I forgot what your second question was. <laughs> the second question, I know they are not related. <clears throat> um, that was the product. The other one is a very nice looking video. Like, like I almost forgot my uh, the second question too. I wrote it down though, uh, or just the keyword, um, a nice looking video. So what makes it, uh, what makes a nice looking video? Like if you think about like you probably seen one of some of my videos or you see tons of like social media videos all the time probably. And, and as a videographer, you're probably looking at it with the videographer's eye, right? Like, oh my gosh, is this you know, on yeah. a scale of 10, this is like a one, come on people, <laughs> right? Um, so what makes a nice looking video? Can you like clarify just a few things sure. about? Yeah, so um, I mean, for, for the most part, if we're talking, um, and, and I assume most of your viewers are, uh, you know, small businesses, maybe 10 employees-ish or somewhere around there, is that right? Exactly, um, yes. Uh -huh. so, so for something like that, if you're gonna do it on your own, much like, much like you do, um, a big distinction, the first is, is to have, you know, understand the way that you're lit. Um, so when you're looking at the camera, you say, I mean, you know, if we look at like my shot here, you know, over here, I'm definitely brighter and this is a little darker, but in general, you can see my face, there's no weird shadows coming in at different angles. Um, having a tripod is a major bump um, because yes, you can hold your phone and you do this and there's certain stabilization in phones now, but Ultimately, if you put it on a bookshelf or on somewhere, somewhere stable, that's going to make it way better. Um, audio is a huge deal. So being somewhere where it's, you're clearly understood or, um, you know, let's say if you were to shoot your own video on the side of a busy street, it's possible. Um, you just have to have to have the right microphone and even just a, a microphone that comes, uh, you know, with your your iPhone or whatever it is, that cancels enough noise that you can use that. So that's, 
that's a big step up for, for self-produced videos. Um, professionally, I mean, you're, you're looking at if you have a motion graphic, something really nice with your logo. Because sure, you can fade it in and fade it out, and that's really nice. And, you know, I study all the time when I'm watching TV, I'll watch, uh, you know, actually really take a look at major companies' commercials and how they're doing it. And there's commercials, say there's a, a Nike commercial, they don't do anything with their logo. It might just pop up and that's it. So it, it works for them. Um, but there is something impressive to say, you know, even a quick little swoop of your logo can wow somebody and make them take you more seriously. Um, and professional videos, I mean, you're, you're going to have uh, much more control over lighting, over sound. Um, you're going to have very nice shots. I mean, this little device over here behind me is uh, my stabilizer for my camera so that you know, I can follow people and there's nothing. I mean, we all know what stabilizers are now. And so um, somebody self-producing could get their own, you know, handheld stick and uh, have a nice, um, smooth shot. Perfect. Well, <clears throat> thanks for these ideas. I, I think, uh, I think you're right. Just investing in a few pieces of equipment probably elevates your video game a little bit. Yeah. Um, nice. What are some of the things you hear from small business owners, um, some of their concerns before committing to professional videos? The, the biggest concern I hear, um, I think most people say it's, uh, they say it's the cost, but really what it is, um, in my opinion, is they want to spend their money right and they want their video done correctly. Because I've heard so many stories and I still come across people who they'll hire somebody professionally and they will spend thousands of dollars on a series of videos and they'll say, it just doesn't work. It's not the right message or something like that. Um, which is to me, I mean, as I build my business, one of the differentiators I have is that I don't do work with people unless I learn what their business is and I understand them. Uh, because like I mentioned before, you have to understand your market because to me, like, yes, and, and actually on the on my homepage video that I created for my explainer video, at the end, I forget what I, exactly I said, you know, I'm not successful unless you are. So it's in everybody's best interest if we produce the right video. Uh, because that's true. I mean, I can spend hours and hours and hours creating an unbelievable video, but if you're not going to use it or you don't have a distribution plan for it, it's pointless. So the biggest concern I think is typically people want to know that they're spending the money and it's not going to be wasted. Right. That there is a plan, right? There is a good yeah. plan. Yes. For how to put it in good use. Um, do you have a recent project you want to tell us about that you especially enjoyed for one reason or another? Um, there's, I mean, this year has been great. I mean, I'm coming up on five years, which is awesome, but it's, uh, I've done so many different projects and, and honestly the most amazing thing to me is that every client I work with um, you know I keep it keep my you know industries very diverse so I'll work with company A and I'll learn something about this type of product and company B and learn about this market something like that um, I mean I did produce a na national commercial this year that was kind of my big um, my big thing so that was awesome and it was a ton of fun just because it was you know it's a 30 second commercial but the thought that had to go into it and the production value and everything, it was nice to be able to spend a lot of time actually thinking through a shot. And, and that's from storyboarding and actually thinking, you know, for me, I'm going to go really deep and go, okay, what kind of lighting do I want? What location is best reflects this? Who's the person who's going to be on camera? Um, I forgot if I said what lens, but it, that has anything to do with the, the depth of field and the focus. It, uh, and then to be able to actually go out there and do a shot multiple times until it's exactly right is, was a ton of fun. Well, congratulations on working with a nationwide company, right? What kind of uh, company or what kind of product it was, was that, it? About? It was a golf club rental company. Oh, okay. Okay. Very cool. Well, it's good to enjoy, you know, the work that we do, right? And I, I feel yeah. like videography is a lot of creativity in there right so it's definitely one of those kind of works that it's never going to be the same on any given day right right and and a lot of times you know during a shoot there's 
just a lot of um, serendipitous type things that happens where you record something and you think, ah, you know what, that's not ideal, but you know, it might work. And then I actually get to editing it and somehow it matches perfectly with say, the beat of a song I'm using or something. And it's like this amazing, uh, I don't know how this happened kind of thing. <laughs> but it all comes together and it's beautiful. That's, That's right. awesome. Uh, so let's touch um, on a topic that, that comes up for me a little bit. And, and I'm surrounded with a, with a lot of uh, business owners that are actually fairly new. Um, I have different business groups online, offline, right? Um, and some of the things I keep hearing is that, oh, um, I'm a little camera shy. I don't like to see myself. Um, I, if this happens or that happens, then I want to start videos. And, and I'm always listening, right? I understand. I, I emphasize it that. I actually had clients where, where we had a really hard time, even like for like a, an hour or hour and a half. We, we, our goal was to produce maybe three, two, three videos, small ones, like a few minutes. And, and we had a really hard time because the person was just so uncomfortable. Like, um, do you have any, any secrets, like tricks or tips that you can give to those people that are maybe getting into video making, but this is like a, a burden, like something that they have to get over, right? Because they are just camera shy. They don't feel comfortable. Yeah. I, I mean, the first thing that, you know, when I talk with small business owners, sole proprietors, anybody like that, there is no expectation of you to be professional and smooth on camera. Most people, when they're, when they're talking and they're recording their own video, um, they're listening to themselves talk, which is a humongous problem. So if you can get to a point where you can stop listening to yourself while you're talking and you're not going to just interrupt yourself halfway through a sentence and say, oh, no, no I'm going to do that again. You push through those, understand that it's entirely natural to say, uh, or, um, I know every, not everybody wants that, but it is natural. It is what happens. And at that level where you are a small business, it gives you a bit more authenticity almost. So you don't want to be too polished. Um, that's one of the benefits of, of producing your own videos is you do have, it gets a, a certain authenticity to it because I can produce a fantastic video and it feels like a corporate message, but there is a trade off where it could lose that feeling of neighborhood one-on-one -on -one connection. Um, and as far as, as, once you grasp that, that it's okay to not be great on camera, um, the tip really is, like I said, don't listen to yourself. If you're writing out a script, practice the script out loud. And that's a big, uh, a big thing because you can write something out how you think you would talk. And that's a huge step in itself to be able to, to write a script how you would talk. But you have to be able to actually say the words. And that's a whole thing in itself. Most of the, um, every time I use a teleprompter uh, with a client, I always say to them first, go through, let's read it, let's do a dry run through. And there's almost always something that needs to be adjusted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great advice. I like it. Thank you. Um, I have a couple more questions. Here's one. Um, do you recommend that websites have videos embedded? And if yes, I don't know. If if it's a yes, then it then how many? Oh, okay, <laughs> how many is too many? Like, or is there such a thing as too many, or ideal number, or or how, what do you think about this? I mean, don't don't kill your customers or clients with videos. That's that's for sure. You want ultimately what you want is you want them to contact you. You want to have that face to face conversation so you can drive the sale home. So don't give everything away. Uh, you basically just want to get them excited. So, you know, every business should have an explainer video, uh, you know, says the video producer, of course, but I mean, statistically, that's true. That's, that's, like I said earlier in our interview, that's the first thing you want to get done. Um, but I mean, beyond that, I actually have a video on my website. Um, I recorded, I want to say three years ago, that was like your essential videos for a website. And it's, it is your explainer video first, um, and then maybe it's your number one product or service. Um, do as many as you can. There's no, there's no harm in that. If you, have a, if you want to be positioned as an expert in the industry so that people come to you and, and you draw more people, and maybe you're, you're providing a service um, that 
would really be beneficial for people to, to learn. So if you're a repairman and you say, hey, here's, a, here's 50 videos of simple repairs you can do yourself around your house, that's tremendously helpful. And no, they're not gonna call you, you're not gonna get money off that. But the thing is, they're gonna search you on YouTube or Google and you're gonna come up first over time. And then that's gonna show them your business and they're gonna get to know you and they're gonna say, oh, this is local, I bet I can hire this person. So I don't know, my only limitation for, for the comment of having too many videos is just as a business owner, you have to ask yourself, is it worth the time right now for me to continue making more videos or do I need to go back to doing other things with the business? It's your own personal thing, I think. And, mm -hmm. and actually, um, as, far as, as far as websites go, um, I mean, video helps SEO tremendously. Um, it's just, like I said before, I mean, search engines love when you crawl, when they crawl your site, they love seeing video on there. Um, embedded, embedded video is fantastic because people want, they're looking for that message. They want that succinct thing. Nobody wants to read anymore. So if they're on your website and you scroll through and they see this link, they're going to watch it first. Um, which again is important to keep it short and sweet at first so that they can, you can follow up, let them find, find their own narrative on, within your own website. And the other thing too, is if you have so many videos that um, you have an entire catalog. So let's take that example of a repairman who has 50, 100 videos of short, simple things. Um, you, there is SEO, but there's also, um, I'll forget the term, but it's, uh, it, it basically, there's, there's a video type of uh, SEO. And you can list your stuff on, oh, a sitemap, I'm so sorry. So in SEO, you submit a sitemap and you're nodding, so you must know what I'm talking yes. about. Um, <laughs> and you're basically giving a map to Google and say, okay, this is what my website looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a video sitemap as well. So if you have that many, you can submit that. And then you're actually more, you're highly listed in, uh, like Google has an entirely separate search engine just for videos. That's what pops up when you get a recommend and there's three, you know, recommendations. So you are then being in two different search results and that is a huge for a business. And thanks for saying this. I think this is a little known fact that how much a video and, and that you can submit, you know, the, the video map for Google. I, I, I think a lot of business owners are not aware of this. So this is, this is great advice. Thank you. Um, um, do you have a secret sauce for um, that you can share with us that make videos really stand out? Like, is there like one or two things that you can point out? You, we did mention authenticity with the mumbling and that how that's okay. Uh, but is there is there something else that makes a video stand out even more? You know, there there are so many little details. You know, in my head, I'm thinking through all my production history and going. I mean note after note after note. But the, I think the first one that a small business owner should start to embrace is, um, you know, in that area of authenticity and speaking naturally, you also just have to be yourself. And I mean, everybody has a quirk here or there, or, you know, there's something they like, or there's a personality trait that they have that nobody else does. And you should lean into that. I mean, even if it's something, you know, if you're a little afraid that maybe this type of, this part of my personality, people won't like, um, try it. Because the thing is, if you're recording your own video, you don't have to put it online. You know, you, you just record it first. Um, maybe show it to a few people who you trust and who, who you're like, well, I'm not going to lose this connection. Um, but authenticity and being, showing your true personality is, a, is an amazing, amazing thing a lot of that has to be uh is related to being comfortable on camera so know your message know your industry um you know if you throw somebody up to represent your business and they they don't know your business it's not going to come through they're only going to be like here's the facts that i'm going through in my head or that i'm seeing on uh the script from before there's no personality so if you <clears throat> if you as a business owner get on camera be be your true personality and if you even if you say i want to come up with some sort of character of myself that's a huge thing too and you can absolutely do that nice okay we like the advice 
Um, and my very, very last question is, will you give some valuable piece of advice to business owners that are interested in video production, but are on the fence about it? Gotcha. Um, I'll give, I'll, let me give two, two directions. Cause to me, there is people who have done no video and want to do their own and people who want to do professional. So to the people who want to do their own videos, um, just start. It's very difficult. It, you can get in your head about it. It can be very uncomfortable. Um, but just go for it. Make the time. Do a 30 second video. Try it out once. See how it goes. Do not beat yourself up. Um, if you don't like it, try again. But at some point, you got to put it out there. Most people just they keep trying to refine and they're so worried about their image. But like I said, nobody expects anything from small businesses which is a very comforted, comforting thing because you can get it out there um, and not be too worried. Don't, don't beat yourself up. Um, on the professional side, if you're looking to hire um, a videographer, a company, a video producer, whoever it is, to whatever degree, um, make sure, I mean, you're obviously gonna go through and look at their por portfolio and see, do I like the quality? Um, I recommend contacting multiple, uh, you know, two or three different companies and just, just get a sense of what you can, what can be done. Um, there are certain, um, there are certain businesses that might serve an industry better. Um, I mean, for me, when I work with a client, um, I consider, is this going to be a long-term thing? What's the benefit? What, uh, um, you know, could there be a discount for, for doing multiple videos? So, do your homework, go out and do more, research more than one person um, and just make sure that that person understands your business and what you're trying to do first. Because there, there are a lot of people out there who are fantastic. I mean, better than me at creating an amazing visual, but they might create you a video that, like I said before, you won't use because it doesn't actually tell the correct story. So make sure that, that there is a, a, a bridge between production values, and the understanding of your business. Great advice. Well, thank you so much for all your valuable uh, pieces, because I feel like there were several gems in here, whether the person watching us is, is a startup business, somebody who's been tackling with videos, you know, like they may be getting comfortable and they're ready to move on to a next level, or... Um, for people that really want a professional videographer's advice. So um, I appreciate your time, Tom. Uh, if you guys want to look Tom up, again, he's with Lightsail Video. His website That's and right. phone number is in the background. He's located in Parker, Colorado, but he works nationwide. So especially yeah. Colorado and in other states. So um, I recommend um, connecting with him and check out his uh, website for some of his work, which I've been looking at and I, I love what I see. So Thanks, if you don't mind my saying too, I mean, one of the things that, that I, I try to build into my business is that anybody can contact me and ask me questions. It's, I mean, it's not like I will only work with you if you sign a contract. I understand there are tons of questions. And to me, as if I can be an advocate to assist somebody in finding the right um, company, even if it's not me or helping them through their first video uh, with, you know, a quick email of, of tips, reach out. I mean, Tom at lightsailvideo.com. I'm happy to help anybody. Very generous. Thank you. All right, everybody. See you guys at the next episode. Thank you.